In the previous video, I installed the Hyper-V role to this Dell R720 server without the blue screen of death, thank God. What I'm going to do this video is install Windows Server 2019 on a virtual machine. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Start menu, go to the Server Manager, and then just go to Tools and Hyper-V Manager. I like to pin this to the taskbar, so I'm going to right click on the icon down the bottom and pin to taskbar. What we're going to do now is right click on the test lab, which is the virtual machine name, go to new virtual machine. I don't want to see that page again, so I'm going to tick the box and click next, and now we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this the test DC for domain controller. You can see that the virtual disk is defaulted to the location that we set up on the Hyper-V install, so I'm just going to select Next. In most cases these days, you're going to select Generation 2, as Generation 1 is particularly for the older versions of Windows, and Generation 2 has UEFI-based firmware, which is what you would prefer to run these days. I'm going to select Gen 2, select Next, and then it's asking the amount of memory we'd like to assign at startup. Sometimes people use dynamic memory, which allows the virtual machine to shrink and expand its virtual memory as it's required, which means you can essentially get more virtual machines on a server. But as this server has 128 gigs of RAM, that is not my concern. So I'll just give it some RAM, we'll just go with 4096 for 4 gigs and select next, then we'll go to the connection. This is the virtual switch that we added to the NIC to earlier. So I'm just gonna select that and go to next. And this is where we're actually creating the virtual disk. Earlier, I also set the location to default the virtual disk to here. So we're gonna leave that as standard. Then we're gonna give our disk a size. So we're gonna give it 100 gigabytes and we're gonna select next. And now it's asking, would we like to install an operating system now, later, from a network-based installation, or from a bootable file? So I'm going to do it from an ISO, and select Browse. The ISO is located on the desktop here, so select Open, click Next, and click Finish. The only other setting I'm going to do is click on the virtual machine and go to settings, find the network adapter, and I'm going to give it a virtual LAN ID just because this does have access to my normal network and if I set up a DHCP server I don't want it giving out addresses. So I'm just going to give that a VLAN ID of 800 and click apply. I'm going to right click on the virtual machine and select connect. And then I'm going to hit the start button. The reason I did that is because it's very easy to miss the press any button key. Now what I'm going to do is just press enter to load the Windows setup. It's now asking us to select a language, a time and currency, and a keyboard. I'm going to leave the language on English, but I'm going to change the time and currency to English Australia, as that's where I am located. And select next. Then I'm going to select install now. It's now offering us four different options of operating systems to install. Two of the versions are standard and two of the versions are data center. Both of these will have the option to install the GUI or the GUI or the graphical user interface, which is the actual start menu and all that sorts of stuff. The reason you might select the version without the desktop experience is that it's less resource hungry 
and it also doesn't come with some of the bogged down applications such as Internet Explorer, etc. But there is some limitations to it, but it is slightly harder to configure for someone who's not experienced. The other main thing we've got to look at here is the standard and the data center. The primary thing I can notice on the Microsoft website, and I'll put the picture up of the comparison, is its ability to run more virtual machines. As I'm not going to run virtual machines within this VM, I'm just going to select the standard evaluation with desktop experience. Now I'm going to accept the license terms and select next and go to custom install. Now we can see the drive that we set up before of 100 gigabytes and we're not going to do anything other than select next. And I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to speed the video up while this installs. Okay, we can see the installation is now done. And we can also see on the task manager here that the memory has gone up from around about five to nine as it has allocated the four gigabytes. We're just going to give this server a password and select finish. And now it's asking us to control alt delete to log in. We'll select control alt delete from the little buttons in the top left corner and we'll put in our password. And our virtual machine is now running server 2019. I'm just going to right click on the taskbar and go to task manager. Show more details, select performance. Just for interest, we can see here that the virtual processors is one, sockets one. By default, we'll shut down this virtual machine, but by default, the cores that are allocated to a virtual machine is just one. Now this server has, right click, has 16 cores. So if we go back into file and settings, and the processor, then we can up the amount of virtual processors we'd like to give it access to. So just for the hell of it, we're gonna give it two, and then we'll click start. Log back in. If I can type the password right. Just go back to Task Manager. We can now see that we have two virtual sockets. Okay, I'll leave the video here and next up we might install Active Directory. See you guys.